everybody loves Ringo. He's universally lauded for being a huge influence and having the perfect feel to be a cornerstone of the most important popular band of the rock and roll era. This is the prevailing history. Everybody has always and will always love Ringo. He has the magic touch. I wouldn't be a drummer without Ringo. That is the DNA of pretty much everything I do. If you hear his drumming, you know exactly who it is. There are millions upon millions of us out there who not only were influenced, but wanted to be Ringo Starr. Ringo was the coolest one. But that's not even close to being true. When I first started playing drums, Ringo was a joke. Literally. The joke was, Pete Best got thrown out of the Beatles for being too good. Don't believe me? I've posted the link to the full video of the clip I showed in the description below. Go watch it. It's only a few minutes long. It's great. I'll wait. Did you watch it? Did you see what I saw? Yeah, they talked about what made Ringo great, but they spent the first minute of the video having to justify why Ringo was great. He's a song drummer. He's a feel drummer. They're defensive about it. They're reacting to the attitude they remember others having about Ringo. At about the same time I started playing drums, the Beatles started making a huge comeback, due in great part to the success of the Beatles anthology albums and television documentary that collected outtakes, old interviews, and the history of the band. This truly was an early precursor to a lot of the content we watch today. Uh, we can't get enough of, and myself is very included in this, looking behind the scenes of the art we love. Phil Rudd is another. While he's been at odds with ACDC now and again, spent some time in and out of the band, Rudd is absolutely considered the spine of ACDC. His fills lock directly to the songs, his beats are simple and rock solid. While drummers had more of a tendency to defend Ringo and left the dogging to other musicians, these qualities of Phil Rudd's that I laud were the same qualities that made him a pariah amongst drummers. The jokes around Rudd started to get meaner and have less of a joke feel. You mean no Phil Rudd? That guy only plays one beat. Yeah, that's not true, but even if it were, he does it way better than you do. Brendan O'Brien just went, and he looked at Phil and he went, you are a machine, my friend. You are a machine. And, and, yes. and Phil just went, oh no. However, time has shown that we now accept Phil Rudd as being the solid player he is. We recognize that his style is a big part of what makes ACDC ACDC. And if we're okay with Phil Rudd, then we need another whipping boy. And we found her in Meg White. The backlash against Meg White started almost immediately as the White Stripes started to break out nationally. By this time, people weren't joking. They were angry. She's got no technique. She can't even play a simple beat. It's too simple. She said she doesn't even practice. That was one that I heard so much after she mentioned it in an interview offhand. Let me tell you, lots of people don't practice. Many people that play high-end gigs rehearse. They don't practice. I know a lot of them that do that. It might not be the choice you make, but it's very common. I was not a White Stripes fan from the beginning. Uh, I'm from Detroit, and I play a lot in the original music scene, and unfortunately I have a chip on my shoulder. I'm aware of it, I try to mediate through it, um, but I can't help but be extremely hard and often jealous of local acts. Uh, that being said, I love seeing local music much more than national acts because you never know what you're going to get. And when you find that band that is amazing, it's, it's magic. What I'm getting at is the White Stripes had to be better than great to win me over. And I completely understand how unfair and blatantly hypocritical that is in context of this article. But get this. I can show you the moment I fell in love with the White Stripes. Damn it, who 
who's that riding? Sound the revelator, tell me 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 who's that riding? Big. In fact, go watch the entire video. The link is in the description below. I'll wait. Did you see it? So big, so powerful, so locked in. Now, tell me you can do better. Tell me there is someone out there that can do better. Tell me there's somebody more appropriate. There's not. And it shows. With the White Stripes having been broken up for a while now, it seemed like the Meg White jokes had fallen to the wayside and we could get to the business of understanding and accepting her playing. I was disappointed last week when I saw a joke article going around stating that Meg White had joined Rush. Ha ha ha. Meg White could never play the complicated drum parts needed for Rush. Did you ever stop to think about the appropriateness of the gig? Of course Meg White wouldn't be right for Rush, because she's not Neil Peart. But the article implies that Rush's music is better than the White Stripes, and that Neil Peart's parts are better than Meg White's because they're more complicated. Did anybody stop to think about the reverse joke? A headline that reads, Befuddle Jack White doesn't know what to do with new drummer Neil Peart in the studio. Or... Neil Peart loads 17-piece kit into studio to record Seven Nation Army. It doesn't have the same ring now, does it? So now we get around to the big point. There's no one right way to music. If we all played the same, and did the same things, nothing would ever change. Nothing would ever get better. Nothing would be fun, or fresh, or new. We certainly wouldn't have any of the styles of music that any of the musicians mentioned here today pioneered. Don't pass a closed mindset on to your students. If they like something you don't, find out why they like it. If they have a question about something you don't like, answer honestly and without sarcasm or malice. Help them learn it. Make it a part of them so they can grow from there and make their own decisions. Remember, you're not teaching yourself. This isn't your opportunity to go back and do it right. It's your opportunity to help your student become the musician they want to become, not the one you want them to become. If you get a chance, like, share, and subscribe, all that stuff. Thanks for watching.